Hello everybody and welcome back for another beading tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of these gorgeous crystal baubles that you can have on your Christmas tree. So it's quite a simple little design that we'll be making that has a netting stitch is what we're going to be using essentially. And with this particular design I thought it was particularly nice just because one it's nice and easy so even if you're a complete beginner you should be able to make this project quite easily but in addition to that the nice thing about making Christmas baubles is that they become almost family heirlooms that people will go on and cherish for many many years to come so I thought I would just show you how you can make one of these but essentially what we're going to need in terms of materials is a wooden ball just here. You can use a polystyrene one if you prefer. This particular one is five centimeters in diameter. Then we also have some of our seed beads just here, which I'm using Preciosa size 10 seed beads, which you need about 12 grams worth or so of those. Then I also have some of my size 11 micro crystal seed beads which these are exclusive to us you can only get them from us so if you want to check them out there's a little link in the description but essentially these little beads here are these crystals on the little vertices all the way around which one they help us to make the process a bit easier when we're making it but also adds a little bit of sparkle and shimmer to your your finished bauble we're also going to need a little bit of acrylic paint just here which i literally just got this it's just oh, it was so cheap i just got it from like the local store and just just got a nice blue one because I'm going to make a blue one just here and then of course we're going to need a pair of scissors so that we can cut our beading thread which I'm going to be using a nice blue color of my spider on beading thread and then lastly what you're going to need is a beading needle which a beading needle is a bit different from a sewing needle just because the eye is very very fine hopefully it will get into focus there there you go it's a very fine eyed needle that will pass through the holes of our little beads just there if you want to go and make this yourself, we also have a kit on our website, but there's also links in the description to all of the different products as well. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is paint your little ball just here. So like I said, you would just pour yourself out a little bit of your ac acrylic paint in terms of how you would paint the ball. Essentially, I think if you go with a darker version of what your seed beads are, which I'll also point out that I've used what are called silver lined seed beads so that they have this sort of shimmeriness to the seed bead. See that? See how they sort of have like a, an inner sparkle about them? That's because they are silver lined. That's what I've got just here. So because I'm doing a blue one. I've gone with a slightly darker blue for the ball which I'm going to paint but essentially you can do it any color if you wanted to like for example this one here which is like the orange bauble it's like a reddier orange bauble you could even use the the gold underneath and have the red netting on the outside just give it a couple of coats uh, so that it looks a little something like this so this is the before and here's one that I've painted Probably not very well, but that doesn't matter too much. It's uh, it's going to be hidden by our beadwork. But this is the sort of look that you want it to have. So it's nice, even coverage. You can make it with metallic paints if you want. Like this one, I used a metallic paint. But it's up to you how you want to do it. So once you've got your beads poured out, I'm going to just pop that just out of shot just there. And in total, you're going to need about three meters of thread. You don't have to do it all in one go, which I have a little video, which I will hopefully put the link to it just up here somewhere uh, for you to go and watch, which will tell you how you can join two threads together. But basically, the amount that you need, just whatever is comfortable for you to use, but in total, you need about three meters. And we'll just thread that onto the end through the eye of our beading needle, like so. So now that we're ready to begin, we're going to be working in circular netting stitch. It's quite a simple and easy one where you just keep going around the circle again and again and again, making the circle that little bit bigger, and that will create like a netting that's going to just enclose our little ball. So first things first, we're going to grab ourselves 16 little beads just there to create the first row of our netting stitch. So just thread those beads down towards the end of your thread and leave yourself a little tail down here of around about 15 or 20 centimeters, so six inches or so, something like that. So my thread is exiting from this side here. So I wanna turn this into a circle. So the easiest way to do that is to just loop back around and pass through all those beads once again. And then as that goes a bit tighter, you can see that's starting to create a loop. And if you just go through maybe one or two more beads a third time, like this, when we pull that all the way tight, it will lock nicely into 
a perfect little ring like that just there. And that's the very first row of our little netting stitch that we're going to create. Now, if you look closely at this point, you can see our thread is exiting from this little bead here. To create circular netting stitch, basically what we're gonna do is go from one bead and across into the next. So we're gonna pick up one seed bead, one crystal and one seed bead. We're going to skip this first bead and pass into the second one. Pass your needle, pull your thread all the way tight so that that little bead is sitting just on the outside of your work there. Just keep in mind as well, if your circle comes a bit loose, don't worry about that. We can tighten that in a bit, but once we finish this step, we can also tie this thread off as well. So again, we're gonna pick up one seed bead, one crystal and one seed bead. We're going to skip one bead and pass into the next. Pull that all the way through and just position it nicely. So again, it's now sticking out to the side. And we're gonna repeat this process all the way around our circle. So one seed bead, one crystal and one seed bead, skip a bead and into the next, all the way around until you've done a total of eight of those little loops just there. So you'll have eight little crystals sticking out on the outside. So I'm about to add my last little group of beads just here. So last one, we're gonna skip this bead, exiting from this bead, skip that one into the next one. So pass into that little bead just there and pull tight. This completes this row of netting and each second bead has this little group sticking out from it. But now we're going to do what's called a step up so that we can start doing our next row. So step up is essentially passing through into the first few beads that you added. And it's extra handy that we've used this extra color of beads just here because it shows us exactly which bead we need to be exiting from. So just pass through the first seed bead and first crystal and just pull it tight until your thread is nice and firm exiting from that little crystal bead right there on the point. This brings us into position to do our next row all the way around from one crystal to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, adding our next row of netting. Before I do that though, I'm gonna get rid of my tail thread. I'm gonna weave it in so that it's not gonna be in the way. So the easiest way to do that is with what is called a blanket stitch knot. So if you attach your needle to the tail thread of your work, So we're exiting from this little bead here. We're going to tie this thread off by just weaving it into some of the beads through the center and tying occasional knots. So I'll just pass through maybe two or three little beads just here and pull tight. And then my first blanket stitch knot, I'm gonna go underneath. If you have a look, we're exiting from this little bead just here. Take your thread underneath that little bit of thread that joins those two beads to each other. As you pull that all the way through, you can see it creates this little loop here. Just take your needle back through that loop and as you pull that tight, just get that to tie nicely into a little knot in that gap. Then we're going to pass through a few more beads. One, two, three, it doesn't matter however many. And now this time, you can see we've got a little bit of bridge of thread just there as well. So we'll pass underneath it. So you can see our needle goes under that little bridge of thread, pull all the way through to create that loop, then back through the loop and pull tight. So now you just do a couple more of these little knots if you want to, three or four of them. And once you've finished, just cut that thread off and we can continue with our next rows back on our main working thread again. So now I'm gonna continue beading my next row of beads around the outside. This time though, it's gonna be a slightly larger number of seed beads in each step. This time we're gonna go for three seed beads, one crystal and three seed beads. We're gonna go from this little crystal here and jump across into the next crystal. Pull your thread nice and tight so that those little beads are sticking out on the outside. Pick up three more seed beads, a crystal and three more seed beads and into the next little crystal around the circle. Pull that nice and tight so that it's sticking out once again. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around this circle. So we'll do our last one now, three seed beads, a crystal and three seed beads into that last little crystal just there at the base of that first loop that we made. Pull that all the way through. Get your thread nice and tight. Make sure they're on straight there. There we go and then we'll step up by passing through the seed beads and exiting from that little crystal 
right there on the tip of that first loop that we've made and pull tight and there you go there's the next row complete now we're going to do another row but this time we're going to do four seed beads one crystal and four seed beads exit from one crystal and into the next pick up another four seed beads crystal and a four seed beads jump across and into the next crystal pull it tight and then we're going to just repeat that all the way around the circle then we're going to step up until we're exiting from the crystal of the first little group we added here and there you go there's the next row complete then we're going to repeat the process with five seed beads a crystal and five seed beads jump across into the next crystal and then we're going to just repeat that all the way around the circle and don't forget to step up then start doing it with groups of six seed beads, one crystal and six seed beads. Then our next row is gonna be seven seed beads, one crystal and seven seed beads, all the way around, same as before. Next, we're gonna do another row again of seven seed beads, one crystal and seven seed beads, all the way around and step up once more. Now we're gonna do a third row of seven seed beads, one crystal and seven seed beads. And again, all the way around. This one, it can be a little bit more tricky to see exactly where you've got into, got to go into because it's more circular looking because we did two rows the same. So just make sure that you're skipping one crystal and going into the second one along, which is that new outer one from our previous row. Just like so. And continue all the way around again until you finish up exiting from this last little crystal to do your step up so it's coming along nicely now at this point we want to start reducing back down because it's going to start shrinking over the top side of our ball from this point so now we'll continue by doing six seed beads a crystal and six seed beads again do an entire row and then step up so at this point here, you can see I've finished my row of six seed beads, a crystal and six seed beads. So it's time to put our bauble into the center. At this point, you wanna make sure that you are happy with the color of your bauble and that the paint is dry. I mean, if you wanted to do it with your completely plain wood one or whatever other bauble you've got, now is the time to be completely certain how you want your bauble to look. Because once you continue, you won't be able to get to it anymore. So just place it into the center of your beadwork and I find that if you turn it upside down it helps to get it in but essentially just sort of maneuver your beadwork a little like so until the netting is sitting nicely like this and it's all sitting neat with your last row that you've added all being accessible along the bottom here. Once you've done that there, you can just pull on this little bit of thread and that should help to keep it a little tighter. So I like to hold it with my two fingers just here and now we're going to start reducing it down even further by doing five seed beads, a crystal and five seed beads. And exactly as we've been doing before, I'm exiting from this little crystal here. We're going to jump across to the next little group just there. So skipping this crystal here and into the next one. So just pass that into that little crystal just here and pull tight. And that will add that next little bit of netting. So we can just now continue all the way around the circle exactly the same way. Try not to let your netting fall off. The good thing is once you finish this row, it'll be pretty much locked in, but just weave all the way around until you get back to the beginning and then step up in that very first one that we, that we did just before. There you are. You can see I've finished that row and I've stepped up now. So it's time to start doing our next row, but this time we're gonna be doing it with four seed beads, one crystal and four seed beads. And again, we're gonna just jump from one little group of crystals to the next. It'll pull these little beads upwards and bring this whole netting tighter and tighter around our little ball. So just continue with the process. Don't worry if it's looking a little bit loose because it will tighten. Plus you can always tighten it a little bit further at the end as well if you feel you need to. So there's our next row. So now we're going to continue along, but this time we're gonna reduce it even further again to be just three seed beads, one crystal and three seed beads and just pass all the way around your work until you've finished and step up once again. 
So we've got that next row finished now. It's coming along really nicely. At this point though, we finished adding in all of our crystals. So now we're just gonna be working with seed beads. The next row we're gonna do entirely just with groups of five seed beads in total, going from one crystal to the next, all the way around to really bring this nicely into the center of our bauble. So time to do that last little join and then we're gonna step up on this one. So into that little crystal just here, then through the first three seed beads so that we're exiting from that middle seed bead just there and pull that nice and tight. Now, if you have a look, when you pull this tight, you can see it becomes quite a bit firmer and it really brings it into the middle. Just take a little bit of time pulling this just that little bit tighter so that it's really, really coming in close now. At this point, we wanna try and be working as tightly as we can and we're gonna do our next and final row now each with just three seed beads. So jump from the middle of this group to the seed bead right in the middle of the next group and pull it nice and tight like that there. Do it again and just continue like this all the way around this final row to get it really firm and all closed up into the center of your bauble. Once again, much like the previous row, if you pull this one tightly each time you add another one on, it will just bring it all nicely into the center as you continue along. So you don't have to get it all perfectly tight on the very first go. You can take your time with it. And just give it a little pull each time. So now that we've got our inner row finished, just weave around all of those beads once more just to get it nice and tight and secure like this here. And then we'll be ready to add on our little hanger of beads so that you'll be able to hang it from your Christmas tree. There we go, that's a bit better. So now just weave to the center of one of these little groups of three. See these little groups three here? Just make sure you're exiting from any one of them, it doesn't matter which, but from that very middle bead. This is gonna be where we can attach our loop from. That's gonna go from one side to the other. So just make sure your thread is exiting from that middle bead right there in the center of that group of three. Then pick up 19 beads in total. You can do less or more, but it needs to be an odd number so that we have like a nice central one that we can attach to. And we're gonna jump from one side of this top circle to the direct opposite side in the middle bead of that group of three on the other side. So thread those beads down onto your needle and take your needle through that bead, just like so. And if I turn it sideways, you should be able to see nicely that that creates this little loop here, which is gonna be the base of our hanging section. So turn it over now, and if you have a look, we're gonna go back up all of those beads so that from this same bead, it's gonna be attached with the little thread on this side here. So if I just loosen it a little, you can see the thread goes from here into this bead. And so to keep it symmetrical, we can go from this side of the bead back up into all of those same beads. That's gonna get it nice and central on that middle bead there, so that when we pull that through, if you look closely, see there's both, pull that tight, and that's gonna keep that at the center of that middle bead there. So now just continue weaving through all of those beads until you get back to the other side, and we're gonna make it so that the other side matches as well. So if you have a look, currently, the thread is only exiting from this side of that middle bead here, so there it is there. So seeing as we already have a thread coming out this side, we're gonna pass into the other side of that bead, just here. And as you pull that through, that's going to attach it nicely to that little bead there as well. To add on our last bit, which is gonna be the part that attaches to the Christmas tree, we need to thread back up this one last time to the central most bead. Now, you don't have to do this all in one go. You can just thread slowly up through a few beads at a time if it's easier for you. But essentially, we wanna keep going through three, four, five, until we get to that 10th bead at the very, very top middle of this loop we've created. We've now got nine beads on this side, nine beads on that side, and we're exiting from this 10th one. So this very last step, the size you make this loop is entirely up to you. So I'm gonna make mine with 40 beads, but if you have a Christmas tree with particularly large branches, you can make it even bigger, 60 beads, 70, 80, even if you want to. It doesn't really matter. It just creates this loop size 
for you to be able to hang it on your tree. So again, just pick up the number of beads that you want. So there's my 40 beads just here. And you can see I'm exiting from this central most bead just here. So we're gonna just loop around and pass back through that very same bead again, just that one bead so that we can pass through it all again to make it extra secure. And as we pull that, it's going to create this little loop just here at the top. And now I recommend passing up through all those beads again, just to make it extra secure, extra tight and extra firm, because the entire weight of your bauble is gonna be going through this little loop. So if you wanna go through this once extra, maybe even two more times, it just will make your work stronger and stronger. Now we're just going to weave around all the way through, back down to the bottom and back through that little bead at the base once more. We'll pull it tight. That makes it just that little bit stronger. And like I said, if you wanna go through it a third time, it's probably a good idea. So definitely go through there a third time. And then once you've done that, weave down this little edge and I'll bring it on back once I get back down into my netting to show you how to finish it off. So here we are, I'm exiting this little bead here and we're gonna just finish off by doing a few little blanket stitches like we did with our tail thread. So pull that through to create that nice little loop shape, pass through there and make sure it's aligned with where the bead, where the thread is coming out of the bead, and then pass through a few more beads and along, and then wherever you're happy doing some knots, until you've got about four or five knots in total, and then we can just cut this off. And right up against those beads, just give that a little cut. So there we are, we've got our bauble all finished now, looking fantastic. You can see all of those little crystals there, really giving it that extra pop. And we've got our hanger here at the top as well, so that we can hang it onto our tree. But don't forget, you can make your Christmas baubles any colour you like, whatever seed beads you like, whatever crystals you like as well. Paint your bauble whatever colour takes your fancy too. It's entirely up to you how you want to personalise them. If you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like and subscribe to our channel for plenty more fantastic beads tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!